Hello. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment, or DORA. My name is Stephen Curry, and I'm a professor of structural biology and the assistant provost for equality, diversity and inclusion at Imperial College in London. I also have the privilege of being chair of the DORA steering group. So DORA, the declaration, dates from about late uh, 2012 and was an initiative and a declaration written by a group of editors and publishers of scholarly journals, primarily from the cell and molecular biology um, disciplines, which was aiming to address the problems that we have from our undue reliance on metrics in research assessment. It is perhaps best known for being critical of the misuse of the journal impact factor in the assessment both of individual research articles but also in the assessment of the endeavours of individual researchers themselves. So it's perhaps best known for being critical of the impact factor but in fact the declaration goes beyond this very first paragraph and runs for another two or three pages and has 17 positive recommendations for an array of stakeholders in um, the academic landscape and that includes uh, funders, um, publishers, um, data providers, um, research institutions and universities and researchers themselves. The particular recommendations for funders, who I know are the, uh, uh, represented very heavily here at this meeting, um, focus um, twofold. Firstly, uh, on having explicit criteria for what counts as high quality research and placing an emphasis on the content of an academic paper rather than the publication venue or any publication metrics associated with it in your assessment of its quality. And secondly, we want to make sure that actually research assessment embraces all the important and valuable activities that academics and researchers undertake. So not just publishing um, uh, research articles, which has tended to be the focus um, of late, um, but thinking about other outputs, such as you know, sharing data sets and software and reagents, other contributions, training PhD students and uh, young researchers, uh, and other contributions to research that has real-world impact or research that changes policy or practice. And so we want a much broader basis for our conversations about what constitutes um, high-quality uh, research. So as well as being a declaration, DORA is now also an organisation. The declaration itself was published in May 2013 and has now accrued over 16,000 individual signatories as well as over 2,000 um, organisational signatories. In 2017, the initiative got a significant uh, boost and reinvigoration thanks to financial support uh, from a number of um, supporting organisations who are listed on this slide. And that has enabled us to hire a small staff, so we now have 1.2 uh, FTEs or full-time equivalents, plus one intern. And even with that small staff, that has allowed us to make a real step change in the level of activity that DORA can pursue, both in raising awareness about the need for responsible research assessment, which is the topic of this conference, but also helping and working with others to think through new tools um, for advancing that agenda. At the same time, we um, reconstituted our steering committee, and it is international, although it is um, focused um, and, uh, with uh, European and North American representation. However, we recognise that because research and scholarship is fully international, then the problem of reforming research assessment has to be a fully international endeavour. So we have also constituted an international advisory board that is truly global and contains uh, representatives from every single continent on the globe. So with our new funding and our reinvigorated purpose, we have outlined a roadmap for DORA uh, and that has three principal elements. The first is to gather more signatures, uh, which is about raising awareness and sparking new conversations about the need for reform and the problem of the misuse um, of incentives that are too metrics based. 
Uh, we're also looking to expand, expand the global and disciplinary reach of DORA. It's very much rooted in the sciences, although in the sciences and in particular in biomedical sciences, I think it can be, can be argued that there is a particular obsession with metrics. But we know that the metricization of scholarship pervades all disciplines and there are issues in the arts, humanities and social sciences, for example, and we are looking to have dialogue with those communities and to advance those conversations. Uh, we're also, as, uh, as seen in the motivation to constitute our advisory board, looking to spark worldwide conversations and that's why we're particularly pleased to be participating uh, in this meeting. Um, and then the third and final one, which I think is the most important one, is our commitment to discover and promote new tools for uh, uh, good practice in research assessment. And so we have been much more proactive about organising workshops and meetings to not just discuss the problem, but to actually think through how we overcome those problems and how we develop solutions. And so we have been working with many different communities and organisations to think about new tools and practices. And I'm just going to mention a couple of those. Um, so one example is a meeting that we convened in North America uh, uh, last year, in October 2019, jointly with the Howard Hughes Medical Institution, and that was primarily aimed to examine the barriers to institutional cultural change. We know that, particularly I think, uh, for uh, research institutes and for universities where researchers and scholars live and have their being, the pressures that they face in terms of employment um, and uh, the external pressures from metrics, from university league tables, mean that we all too easily fall back into old and bad behaviours and we do really need to do the hard work of thinking through new solutions and working together as communities within those institutions but of course also it's important for institutions to collaborate with one another because I don't think anybody has figured out the answer to this yet and this meeting is yet one more opportunity to have dialogue about what are really workable solutions. So the summary of the deliberations of that meeting and a sort of scoping um, of um, uh, examples of good practice from around the world was written up and published uh, in this paper in eLife, uh, which appeared uh, in the summer of this year. Um, one other area uh, where we have uh, been working with other organisations is in the development of new tools and policies. Uh, this is one example. We um, were consulted by the Royal Society in uh, the UK on the development of a narrative CV form that is used, uh, can be used in research and researcher assessment. So this is a way of replacing the long lists of bibliographies uh, which are often accompanied by the journal impact factors in people's CVs and it's a way of providing a structured narrative that gives access to much more qualitative information about particular contributions and can uh, also then speak to the breadth of activities that we are looking to value. Not just high quality research and high quality publications, which is of course important, but things like one's commitment to open science, commitment to collaboration, commitment to policy engagement, commitment to mentorship. Uh, another um, we, organisation we have worked closely with is the Wellcome Trust in the UK, who are a strong supporter of DORA in helping to inform their open access and funding policies. And so they now have a very strong policy uh, which requires applicants for funding um, to be working at institutions that have either signed DORA or have implemented reforms to re research assessment that are consistent with the DORA principles. Uh, we've also developed uh, new tools for research assessment and here is just one example. This is work done in collaboration uh, with Ruth Schmidt uh, and is developing short one-page briefings um, debunking myths and helping people to think through biases that we hope will stimulate conversations at many uh, institutions. So DORA is a declaration, but
but ultimately declarations become fixed in time. One of the issues we have dealing with a number of organisations that have either signed or are thinking of signing is that we find they tend sometimes to obsess, obsess a little bit about the wording of the declaration and in those conversations we would always emphasise the importance of the spirit of the declaration. Think about what it is we are trying to achieve in terms of implementing and introducing robust good practices around research assessment that incentivise the very best behaviours and the very best results in terms of research output. So I particularly have a, a personal philosophy about what uh, research excellence looks like, which is uh, encoded here on the, or written here um, on the slide. And our emphasis at Dora would always be that actions are far more important uh, than words. And I hope that that will form part of the words that we share and discuss um, at this meeting. One final thing I want to mention is that the work that we are doing at DORA and the work that many other organisations are doing to reform research assessment is obviously taking place within a much larger conversation um, around the world and within academia um, and the major elements of that are thinking about how to advance open scholarship and then also thinking about how to make sure that the academy is truly inclusive. In too many countries and the UK um, I would include in that uh, the, uh, the demographics within the academy do not fully represent the demographics of the societies that we are aiming to serve and that's a problem and it's a problem that's related to uh, research assessment because I think sometimes we fall back on stereotypical ideas of what a good researcher looks like and we need to challenge those biases if we are going to develop a truly vigorous uh, research e ecosystem. So with that I will uh, thank you for your attention and I look forward to the discussions at the meeting to come.